Hey guys, Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks reporting from a Zeppelin. I am at the IAA, the Frankfurt Auto Show. This is the largest auto show in the world and I'm not in a car. Now I'm here with Arnold from ZF who's going to talk to me about why we are in a Zeppelin at an auto show. Arnold, how are you doing? This is basically where it all started for our company over 100 years ago. And uh, as you see, we moved quite a lot, so like from, from manufacturing parts for Zeppelins, transmissions, etc., to right now to self-driving technology within 100 years. It's like that's a very strong point in innovation, I would say. So now self-driving technology isn't just about cars. It's about so much more. A self-driving car or self-driving feature is not just a product. It's like a way a much more a technology. So like you can derive much more products out of this one without even like knowing what will be next. Like I think the people who invented the laser back in the days, I don't think they were quite aware of all these usage of this technology and what kind of products, data storage, etc. Like this is a very base technology and this is what we're also developing right now. And I'm quite sure we go on and deliver a lot of products in different fields based on this autonomous software and autonomous systems. Back in the day when cars first came around, everyone was a little bit skeptical of them because horses work just fine. <laughs> Now, if we look at how things are evolving with the automotive industry, I feel like we're almost at a similar place. I think to the average person, when they look at self-driving cars and self-driving tech, it all seems a little fanciful. Sure, we think that we're going to be having it in our cars soon, but that's not really the case. It's not going to be for the average consumer first, it's probably going to be for industry. The end users, like we as a passenger car drivers, um, we're going to see the self-driving technology already on the roads. But the difference is that we, I think in the very first step, we do not own it in our personal car because like currently the costs are basically too high that you can basically put that into a passenger car. I think people wouldn't buy a self-driving car because it would be too, too expensive. But I'm quite sure we're going to see this technology in other fields of our daily life. So I would say logistics, I would say um, people, cargo moving. So everything which keeps our society, our daily life alive. So like you're delivering uh, of parcels from Amazon. So like you're ordering something from Amazon, you are basically waiting for the parcel. And everything which is happening behind the curtains, which you don't see because you see basically one, uh, let's call it very happy guy, giving you the package and you are also very happy about the parcel. But how much logistics are behind that? This is something you do not see in your daily life, but they are there. And this is basically, we're gonna see self-driving technology supporting a lot. ZF actually has a tech day. It happens once a year in uh, Friedrichshafen. Did I say that right? Oh, perfect. And two tech days ago, you guys actually showed a self-driving trailer that was able to unhitch its cargo mm -hmm. and leave it. And this to me was like incredibly mind blowing. The fact that a trailer could drive up, leave its tractor, and then drive away. So you guys are working on so many different things within the autonomous field. Now, on this um, global press event in 2018, we demonstrated um, basically the, the whole chain of logistics. So from this freight, freight yard mobility, this hub to hub mobility, which is basically behind these two freight yards, and in the end, the last mile delivery. So like exactly the problems of a, of a parcel delivery person. And uh, we demonstrated this in, uh, in a few vehicles. And for example, one of these was the last mile uh, delivery vehicle where I've seen the, basically the delivery person of the future. If you look in a, in a normal crowded area in a city, like, like here in Frankfurt, I think these delivery services are parking in the cities and there's a lot of traffic and they're causing even more traffic because like they have to stop, they have to deliver their parcels. So like they cannot just park everywhere. And this is what we took away from, 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 from the driver, the stress. So like he can or she can focus more on exactly the interaction with, uh, with the people you are delivering the parcels to. So for example, we can even um, deliver a more cost, uh, customer focus like of this delivery guys. And for example, in our area, they are very stressed right now because like we, the demand of, of, of packages of parcels we are ordering from different web online shopping platforms is increasing and increasing. And this puts a lot of pressure into the logistics uh, area. And this is where we found basically exactly this issue. And we're trying to solve this. And we're going to solve this for using our products. The last mile solution is one of those things that everybody is trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. It's one of the hardest issues or problems within the mobility chain. ZF has a lot of different solutions. And you guys are working towards achieving a mobility life balance. Mobility is one of the basic needs of, of, of humankind right now. So like you, you want to have a mobility which is uh, flexible, which is adapting to you, 
So like you want to go from point A to point B, you want to visit your friends, you want to go in, on vacation, etc. And right now it's quite inflexible. It's like you, you have to basically adapt yourself, your needs, your demands uh, on, onto, let's call it an ecosystem of public transportation, train systems, etc. Um, and this is what we are for. We're like, we're trying to develop technology which is supporting you, which enables you exactly one of your basic needs of mobility. Now at CES you guys showed uh, an autonomous passenger mover, mm -hmm. right, that was able to drop you off at hospitals and schools and you could kind of select where you wanted to go. And when you look at how this technology is emerging today, it's all in sort of geo-fenced areas. It's in specific uh, zone, downtown zone. You guys are already active in these areas now. The point before you can reach like true autonomy, like not in geofenced areas and under, let's call it non-controllable, so like situations where you cannot control, you cannot basically understand like what you are doing as a human driver every day. It's like everything can happen in the next few seconds. And uh, this is the reason why we say that we have a step-by-step -step approach. It's like we start with technology and mo uh, movement from one specific area where we know exactly what will be sur surrounding us, like what situation we may encounter to deal with this, to establish basically a safe system. And on the next hand side, we are uh, focusing on the not geo fence area. So like you can say, order a car, let's call it a self-driving car, open the door, say, I want to go to the hospital visiting my mother, or to close the door and you will be picked exactly to that specific place. Maybe over town, from town A to town B. So I wouldn't even limit that too much. Mm -hmm. And for example, as you mentioned the last mile delivery. Um, I think the challenges are not only on the last mile delivery, the challenges are on the freight yards, the challenges are exactly due to the shortage of drivers as well in the, in the, in the cargo moving industry as well. On the highway, from the technology point of view, there are different, let's call it, challenges. Because like on highways you have a bit more space, you have also a lot of more speed added to the system. So like you need to encounter situations, for example, we in Germany we have like very high speed driving vehicles on uh, on our autobahns yeah. and we have to safely deal with that. On the last mile delivery or for example in, in inner cities we have the problem that we have not much space. That means everything can happen within the next seconds. A lot of pedestrians are walking by, electric scooters, etc. And this is like another type of, 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 of challenges. But I would say that putting in self-driving technology will be one very big thing. It is one big thing and we are very happy that we are basically contributing to that. Well, I don't know how much you can see from this view, but we just had a pretty big turn. And Zeppelins generally aren't known for their stability, though this ride's been pretty good. But motion sickness is definitely something that I was warned about to prepare for for, for this flight. And whenever I think about autonomous vehicles, I always worry about the, the issue of motion, motion sickness, because when I'm not driving and I'm reading, I'm immediately a little bit nauseous. Exactly. And you guys are working on a solution to this. Yeah, for example, the magic carpet, which, which exactly, if you're, if you're away from the driving task, you're sitting in a vehicle at higher speeds, for example, and higher dynamics, you feel uncomfortable. Some people get even sick of, with that. And this is why we started the investigation and the research on exactly how we can deliver and create products to solve exactly that issue. I know it from myself, sitting in the car with a laptop, chatting, writing emails, and then you feel like, whoa, what are we doing? Yeah. And exactly the same feeling as we have right now here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the reason we are basically also focusing on that. So like there's a very wide area of technology applications to improve mobility. And we're not focusing on one. We have like a very high variety of tasks we have to do. Where our company makes a difference is that our technology has a, let's call it a high standard of quality. So like if we are producing something, if we create a product, we are making sure that it's work like it should work. It's a safe product. And this is also for self-driving technology, a very huge task, which we shouldn't underestimate. So to make such a product and for example, in a mixed area where even let's call it other traffic participants, bikers, pedestrians, skaters, e-scooters, for example, uh, aside our vehicle, we need to make sure that we are safe even in this situation. And this is also what for the social awareness of this topic. We, do not, we shouldn't underestimate basically the amount of reliability and safety we need to put into this product. And this is what ZF has basically proven over the past 100 years. That is very basically great in creating safety relevant products. So now ZF has been making Zeppelin parts for 100 years? <laughs> Yeah, so it was like one of the first products. Yeah. And uh, as you see, basically we changed a lot. So like, uh, we could say that we are not building main, mainly Zeppelin parts right now. It became something like, uh, 
a piece of heritage. Right now we're focusing more on uh, automotive driveline technology, on, on automated driving, sensor development, etc. So like we have a, basically the biggest portfolio right now. And uh, I tried to, I, I searched the internet and what I found out is basically we're the only supplier who can deliver the whole chain. So like mm -hmm. from the sensor over the computational platform, which is a pro AI for our case, uh, until even the level four capable um, actuators in the vehicle. And we put this all together with our joint venture, Ego, mm -hmm. um, and put this all together into one system. So like we can deliver the full chain of effect, basically. And there are not many companies who are able of doing this. And I think that it's important to kind of highlight that because understanding the entire chain of delivery is something that the industry is overall struggling with right now. There, you can see, in general, a lot of the automotive makers are, are forming lots of partnerships, which I love to see kind of that collaborative nature coming together because this is such a massive task for the industry to undertake. And it's not going to be one car maker, one company that's going to essentially figure it out. It's going to be everyone's going to kind of come together. And the fact that you guys understand the whole stack is very valuable. I see this the same way. And, and this is basically the point where it steps in. So from the strategic point of view, exactly with the strategic corporations, with this in-house uh, development, combined basically with our partnerships, is bringing this whole ecosystem together. But we are going to maybe enjoy some of this view before our ride is over <laughs> because IA uh, is on and we are going to be heading to the show floor after this to see what ZF is doing at their booth.